Sure, um, and they are good ones too. <laughs> they just so we have this uh, Monday night, the power of our profession for corporate managers, and uh, the one and only Clayton Bruce, husband of mm-hmm. Stephanie Bruce, will be sharing his thoughts and uh, ideas with us, which will be great. Um, well, and, and I, have, I just want to I just want to make a comment about that. That you know, um, when we all started our businesses, it was. You know, for many of us, it was about being home with our kids. But, uh, and I think it is for young families today as well. But increasingly, I hear our uh, moms talking about earning their uh, enough income and building their Shackley businesses to the point that their husbands will have the option mm-hmm. of leaving their business whenever they want. And that's why we realized that it's important for us to understand what's happening in corporate America today. And Stephanie, I don't know if you want to say anything about that, about what, uh, and you may be joining him on Monday, as what Clayton uh, intends to talk about on Monday. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I guess just a little brief info about him. Um, He has worked for the same corporate company ever since we graduated college and we've moved to three different states for them and you know we've Mm -hmm. kind of been at their beck and call. Um, Mm -hmm. And the new director's conference which was a trip that I had earned to California for both of us was really life-changing. You know we kind of really took a look at our lives and realized too um, that my husband's job never has paid for a trip for us to go on like that or (laughs) I've never had to pay car bonuses for us and so we're kind of realizing you know rather than being a slave to somebody else and not necessarily enjoy your job every day um, you know and like I said we've been at their beck and call we have moved three states with um, our kids and so that's a lot so now we're trying to be our own bosses now and build the future for our family so we're in control of what our destiny is and rather than the employer that my husband works for. Nice. Mm. I, I hear that, that Stephanie. I understand that. We've moved a lot well, too. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. See, and I mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's why that's going to be a very important session. Uh, for people to hear. So we'll review the benefits of a Shackley business, but it's very important for the rest of us to understand the realities of corporate America today. So, mm-hmm. yeah, very interesting. Well, that even, that, that, even, not even today, because, um, you know, Gary Burke, who uh, is speaking on October 5th, his background is as a teacher, but when he came into Shackley, he was working in corporate America. And, uh, you know, like he said, he was making a good income, had a good life, but he said he knew he didn't have a future. And hmm. so, I mean, that was 40-some years ago. So, you know, yeah. there's, I think that, that whole thing with corporate has been around for a long time. So oh, wow. this will be great. We've got Clayton Bruce next Monday and then followed up with Gary the following Monday. And then a series of wellness webinars that... Um, are just you know packed with great material, great information, and this is a this can be a real PV generating resource if people will use it. Barb, I think you're the one that had said, you know, you were working with somebody who needed a, an additional 500 PV this month, and the idea was, well, what if they contacted 20 people, invited them to the wellness webinar. Um, or or a health chat call, whatever it is, maybe even incentivize them. If 10 people came and you followed up diligently with those 10 people, they all sponsored, let's say, and you got them on a 50 PV order, that's 500 Mm -hmm. PV right there. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to do all the work yourself. You know what I would add? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What I would add to that too, Joe, that I have had the best results is when, when I'm inviting them to a topic, then to set up a phone appointment as to when we can follow up. So it might be right after the call. It might be the next day at whatever time. But then it's just a little bit higher accountability for them to show up because we are going to talk about it. And, and I, of course, I understand if they can't get on it, then I'll go over my notes with them. But, but that has helped a lot. Like they sure. just, I feel like they're a little bit more of a student, you know, of, oh, well, we're going to talk about this, so I better yep. tune in and yeah. listen and, yeah. you know. Very smart. Have something to talk about. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I know it's Moira, Moira, Moira. So um, mm. this is the month that we are sharing lots of ideas 
that are helping us meet new people, um, to uh, teach them about Shackley products. And one of the new ideas some genius came up with, oh, it might have been Angie. Oh, she's the other one I'm supposed to unmute. A Angie Thomas, see if you can find her. And um, they came up with this smoothie workshop idea, which I've never heard of in my life. And but whoever <laughs> made this graphic, it is totally gorgeous. And mm -hmm. so uh, Pam wasn't able uh, to pop on this morning. So Moira is, has been doing them as well. And uh, 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 Andrea Albulas, and apparently all over the group they've been doing these. So Moira, would you just share with us in our pre-call what it is? And then I think I have some of the results that people have gotten with them. Okay, sure. Um, well, I wanted to share today because I, you know, I'm sure there'll be another time Pam can share. But um, I really think these have been fun, and they have been a great way to get some good results. Um, I know that Angie Thomas put together some things and sent it to us, but I think it was also from somebody in Bonnie Donahue's group that came up with it. But it's mm -hmm. similar to if you've ever been to a freezer meal workshop from Wild Tree or tastefully simple, the other like direct selling companies that sell food items where you come in and you're around the table, or around the counter and you make, in that case, they make meals, take them home, put them in the freezer and they have a convenient meal to pull out. So it's kind of along the same concept, but they, your guests come over and they put together smoothies. Now they're, I think it's, an, it's important to know that they don't put any liquid in them, but we're preparing them so they have a a base of a smoothie to have in their freezer and then when they want to make a smoothie they just pull it out of the freezer throw it in their blender and um, add their liquid of choice the water milk whatever and ha they have a smoothie that's been all prepared um, and so again we're clever. looking at convenience very but clever. also introduce you know introducing them to the idea of smoothies and I found that it's a good way since we have this new life shake it's been a good way for me to call my customers to say, hey, I want to let you know what's new. And they always ask, well, what's new with that shake? And I'll invite them to a smoothie workshop. So as they've come over, um, and there's, you know, we don't have enough time to talk about all the details. And if you're interested, there are all kinds of files on it that explain the recipes and the procedure and all of that that we can share with you. But as what I've seen is as the people have come over, I've had the life shakes out and I've had the life strip and the vitalizer pack and so they're always asking oh, okay so are we getting rid of the vitalizer and are we doing you know what's the life strip so there's a bit of a conversation in the beginning about what's new with the life shake as well as the life plan and so it's a nice selling or at least you know educational opportunity there to show that and then we show them some recipes and say hey let's make some smoothies so you can go home with them but then as Jean and I were talking about at one time, I mean, there's 14 meals here on this graphic. So they would go home with, you know, breakfast for two weeks if we want. And they're paying us, we're asking them to pay us $50. But Jean, brilliant as she was, says, okay, but what next? You know, what comes after this? Who gets the money? Who gets the PV? What are we generating? Besides, I mean, it's wonderful to generate interest in making healthy smoothies and using our products. Mm -hmm. We got to thinking and we thought, well, what if we cut it down to seven meals? So we make seven smoothies and it can be $25. And, but then really talk about promoting a sale there. And if it's a new person promoting a membership and a sale. So we came up with the idea that they could, we promote it by saying, come and make seven smoothies. So you have a week of breakfast. Mm -hmm. Then, we would like, you know, let you know about the free shipping and the new packs and things. And if you're not a member, or even if you are and you need some more smoothies, there's a great family pack. So we promote the family pack, that two bag of smoothies. And you get, uh, with that, you get free shipping. And if you're not a member, you get free membership. And so if they go home and they, if they order that family pack or 100 PV worth of product, then we'll waive that $25 fee. Smart. for them and then they place the order so then we're getting PV as opposed to otherwise we get the PV the distributor because we have to order all the smoothies mm -hmm, and have all the mm -hmm. supplies so we get the PV but we want to generate PV and we want to generate new members mm -hmm. um, and so as a result that's what we've done Pam's done one I've done one Jean and nice. Alex is doing one and so we've created PV I created but I had 
but we've also created somebody that's interested in doing a smoothie workshop themselves. There's also a gal that says, I'm like, I'd like to talk about the business. So we're talking about her doing a smoothie workshop to kind of kick off a business. Nice. So it's been a really just, and it's fun. You know, it's a fun idea to have people over and mm -hmm. do a little discussion and fun. And then again, get some business from there um, and possibly, you know, some interest in the business um, as distributors and things oh, nice. like that. So that's yeah. any time. Anytime we bring people together, it's always it gives us a chance to talk about all the different aspects of Shackley. Um, I ha was able to get results. So um, I think in Pam's workshop, she had uh, a 500 PV workshop. And do you remember yeah. how many people mm -hmm. were attending? She and had six. No, she, I think she just I think she had four people there because two became members. They had been retail only type members, so they became members. Mm -hmm. And then the other two did order as well, and one of them will be doing her own workshop, and she's interested in the business. Um, I had somebody upgrade to the life nice. plan. She's an auto ship, very regular customer of mine, but she upgraded to the life plan for her auto ship this month. Um, the other one has been out of the country for two years in China, and this was a chance for me to invite her over to learn what's new. Mm. So she came over and learned what's new, and I got to see her and seen her, and um, and she went home and ordered um, a Life Shake and Vivix, and you know she hasn't ordered in two years. So um, wow. really That's great. Amazing. And and this was um, Andrea did one in the home of one of her um, customers, and four people attended. And you can see there, um, two bought the fifty dollar package, and one bought the seven, and then the host got um, that was her gift for hosting and then she uh, became a member with the life plan so I mean, it's really they've all been very productive I mean they're just surprised mm -hmm. me so thank you thank you we're at the top of the hour sure. thank you mm -hmm. all right. one more great idea and we'll attach those rest of the outline <laughs> um, more yeah. that you have, we'll have or else you'll get nine million phone calls yeah or right. I will <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, we're off and running. Okay, uh, Lisa, get us started. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. We are on session number five of our fall business training, 100 Days to Amazing. And today we're talking about, I think, an incredibly important topic, uh, the idea of moving someone from interested to committed. Um, and it's, it's going to be a, a, a good discussion, and we're going to get a lot of great ideas. Here we go. And Very good. We've got one week left in September, and so we wanted to just remind you that September is a pivotal month. Um, the very first one then for the trip qualifications, this is the month that people need to achieve the rank of coordinator in order to qualify for Los Cabos or achieve executive coordinator to qualify for Tuscany because you have to hold that rank for four months, and then you get those points. Um, and that takes you all the way to December, um, which is when our incentive year is over. Um, the Chairman's Retreat is such an incredible opportunity for really anybody at any level. Um, so just remember, this is to accumulate 10,000 additional uh, personal group volume, plus they are allowing you, if you have any directors that break out anywhere from August through December, their um, PV will count too. And this is one of the few incentives that when um, when people are are breaking out their volume, uh, usually we get we get acknowledged for them being a leader. But this is one that's unique that their volume also counts towards this additional ten thousand um, volume that we need. And if you're curious about what your base um, PGV is, your personal group volume, talk to your upline. I think everybody received a letter that would have had that on there, but if you have any questions, find out what that is, and then all you do is you take that number, you add 10,000 to it, and then divide that total number by five, and that will give you the five months of what you kind of need to average. Um, or, or if you haven't done it for August, then you can bump up those averages for the next four months. Um, but that's a really, really sweet thing. We've never had this chairman's retreat. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for people to experience something super duper special um, with Shackley, which is cool. Um, we're going to continue to review some ways to generate 1,000 PV. And part of that is because who doesn't want to generate 1,000 PV, but also in line with what we're talking about here with people wanting to, to get new ranks, with people wanting to attend the chairman's retreat. Um, we, we want to be able to um, 
to teach our, our group, but also to remind us, yes, this is what we can do, and, and this is easily to, achieved, um, to achieve if we do these different strategies. And then just to remember that September and January are one of the two biggest times when people start new things, and I love fall. I love when school starts. I don't know why, but it feels really fresh to me. And um, for uh, I am an empty, I'm recently an empty nester, so this is like a totally uh, different fall. But in the past, I just there, even though I was home with my kids and I love being with them, there is a freshness about them being excited for school, about me having a little bit more time um, to be able to work on things. So this is a really nice sweet time. Um, and then for people like me who are empty nesters, this is a perfect time because um, they have probably more time on their hands. Um, and then we have been challenged by Roger Barnett to do this um, amazing 100 Days to Amazing. And Barb figured it out last night that we have 59 days left. Um, so we have one more week to make September amazing. And this can be things in our businesses. It could be things in our families. There are so many different aspects of this that we can, we can really make um, this fall something to remember, uh, which is super cool. So. And 59 days is a long time, and so yeah. it's good. I like having that because it's really good. We need to recognize mm -hmm. that and stuff can happen in 59 days. So, mm -hmm. All right, so like Becky said, uh, we want to consistently continue to bring to you these ideas of 1,000 PV and how to generate it, and like she said, who doesn't want 1,000 PV? It's the building <laughs> block to building a director and to increasing in rank. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're giving you good concepts around these. So we're, I'm excited. We're going to have Stephanie and Meredith come on and talk about what they're doing. Our team happened to just finally launch our first health stories call. Uh, we mm -hmm. had 10 people on them. A lot of them were, were brand new distributors and new people. But the conversation and the environment was so positive. We have a couple new orders already. Um, but I was almost more excited about the, the newer people people that, I, we had one lady on the health stories call said, I didn't realize that the products that were not listed under the children's section in the catalog were okay for children. And we're like, oh my gosh, of course they are. And so mm -hmm. it's just, it was a really good atmosphere and I'm extraordinarily excited about the ease of them because we could pull it together very quickly. So there's my report, but we want you to remember that most leaders can generate 1,000 PV, but it takes referrals to get to the 2,000 part. And so that's part of this conversation of, of learning this. So uh, Barb, if you want to introduce your, these girls and let them share what they're doing. Sure. Sure. Well, um, Stephanie, Bruce, and her enormous growing team have been coming up with just a lot of very creative things. We've had Stephanie on a number of times to share ideas that she comes up with on Facebook all the time that are enormously successful. But now they've um, there's a couple of other things they've been doing. And so um, Stephanie and Meredith are joining us this morning. And, um, and the first idea is about the neighborhood bunko party. Tell us about that. Hey, Barb, you might need to unmute Stephanie again. Um, she got bumped off and then came back on. Oh, poor girl. Ah. All right, hold on. Oh, except that's Stephanie's goofy phone. That happens regularly. When I, okay, here we go. You got her? Okay, good. Okay, Meredith, you handled that handily. Okay, <laughs> okay. go ahead. <laughs> Talking to herself over there. <laughs> Hi, guys. Stephanie. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Well, this is Stephanie. Yes, it's as you guys can see here, um, I hosted a mom's night out bunko night at my house. I had actually um, a neighbor in my neighborhood who was interested in the business. She had contacted me after my posts in Cleveland were on Facebook. And this is somebody I hadn't really talked to before, but she contacted me and wanted to get together to find out what I was doing because it was intriguing to her. And she was looking to quit her job. And so um, we had a, we had two play dates where we talked about it, but I really wanted to show her more of my team because I was on that, that it's not just me, you're getting my whole entire team when you join us. And so I wanted to do something fun and not totally Shackley oriented where we're sitting down looking at PowerPoint presentations, stuff like that. So. I created a bunko night at my house, and this is exactly the invitation that you see there. Let the good times roll. Come join us for a mom's night out bunko game. It starts at 7.30, goes till 9. So I didn't have it be too long, but something that we could all, you know, leave the kids for a little bit and come. 
Um, and then we'll play Bunko with a brief Shackley business opportunity chat afterwards. Um, and so we had a great turnout. We had um, a total of, tw uh, wait, there were more than nine. There were, Meredith, how many of there were us? <laughs> there, was, there was eight of us, maybe. Eight of us there. And wow. we, is it working? Am I through? Yep. Yeah, oh, we're oh, hearing okay. you. Oh, I heard something in the background. Okay, so we um, uh, had eight of us there, and we all just played Bunko. And this is a really great game to play with people because you have to have a different partner every game. And every quote-unquote game starts um, every – it literally could take 10 seconds or it could take 10 minutes. And so you, are, you get to work with everybody who's at the party with you. And then, so everybody was kind of having great conversations, getting to know everybody else. And then afterwards, I just said, um, you may have noticed that some of us have been talking about Shackley products, and I just thought it would be a great opportunity for the few of us who are on our Shackley team together to go around and share why we are in Shackley, what led us to uh, be interested in Shackley. So the four of us distributors that went around and talked about why we were in Shackley. And it really was great because some people then talked about it on the car ride home. And we had some people who attended that were not members um, or were members but not distributors. And so we're kind of just starting the conversation in a safe um, environment that we were having fun and, you know, it wasn't too much overload of Shackley. And actually, um, for me, I, the person who I was talking about at the very beginning, one of my neighbors, she did sign up yesterday um, after attending our meeting, our, our Bunko game, and she became a gold um, pack distributor. So it, it was you very. You got a gold distributor from someone attending the neighborhood Bunko party. Yes. That's awesome. Yes, and everybody has want, has really been talking about this Bunko game, and we've had so many people contact our entire team saying, I would really like to go to the next one. I really want to go to the next one. Aww. So as a monthly event now, and hoping that we'll just keep growing our team through Bunko. <laughs> and you know what? Definitely, this, that's so great. Yeah, and this is a great example of, integrating Shackley into our lives. You know, you can still have social events and benefit with Shackley. Um, you know, so it, it just, I think this is a great example. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So, but this isn't her only great example. So, then, uh, <laughs> let's bring in Meredith here because this is another really interesting thing you did that was very productive. Meredith, tell, tell us about the daycare center. Um. I reached out to a local um, drop-in child care facility um, called the Busy Patch, and um, I just asked them if I could put on a, um, a children's health um, sort of workshop there um, after hours and invite their um, all of their parents to come to it, and then I also publicized it to my members and my friends in my neighborhood and stuff like that. Um, it was a great opportunity to co-op sort of with that business because um, I I took care of everything in terms of the actual workshop, but because it was bringing in business to their facility, um, they offered half-price child care for anyone that attended the workshop. Mm. So it was great. It, it gave everyone an opportunity to not be able to say, I can't come because I've got my kids. And the mm -hmm. facility is, you know, obviously fantastic, family-oriented, great place for the kids to play. So the children had a fantastic time while their moms were in uh, the little conference room with us um, talking about Shackley. So we really tried to um, tailor our presentation to talk about kids' health um, and uh, boosting kids' immunity as a back-to-school type of thing. Um, and it just it went over very, very well. Um, the, we had Five people attend the um, the session. We got um, I got orders from every one of them, and one of them be also became a gold pack distributor. Oh, so it was like a 500 PV party. And but what mm -hmm. I really want to point out, and um, <clears throat> next week uh, Crystal Johnson's going to be joining us because she's built her business on this whole beautiful concept of small local businesses networking with one another <clears throat> and mm -hmm. supporting one another's businesses. And I just, 
it just feels to me like that's community at its best. Mm -hmm. And and kudos to you, Meredith, to come up with that idea. And <clears throat> that was a win-win yeah. for your mm -hmm. business, for your business, and for the, the, the lucky uh, parents who got to connect with this great daycare uh, facility. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, uh, anything else, Stephanie, you want to mention on this? No, not really. I think Meredith did a great job. Um, but I guess that, you know, from us going there and building that relationship with the owner, she has now invited us to come back and host more meetings there. So we have one planned for October, and it's going to be about healthy moms equal healthy families because we really noticed mm. that this event. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the mm -hmm. moms are going through the, the um, product guide, and they were really realizing all the products geared towards weight loss and um kind of more for them because they had been focusing on their kids so much before on all their previous orders. So we really decided that let's put something together for moms because we all know that's who really run the families, you know. If mom's not happy, mm -hmm. no one's happy. So we want to focus on that and make sure the moms are taken care of. So Very nice. Very nice. So, um, so uh, we're talking about back to school packages and Lisa do you want to just mention these couple of aspects and then we'll show them a couple of yeah. packages of how easily you can put together a thousand PV yeah I think I think one of the most important things at, around this conversation is that we can pretty much guess across the United States what moms are thinking about probably right at this moment um, and that <laughs> is how to keep their kids healthy and how to help them learn and optimize you know what they're what they're learning and what their education is bringing into their brains and so it's just a really good time to reach out and have these conversations because the thoughts are already there um, so mm -hmm. Becky you can take us through some of these packages you bet so here's just some nice um, right at 50 PV um, categories and you can see we've got for younger kids or for older kids who can swallow um, when you show this to a mom um, what's interesting is, you know, we've got the package for immune health for both age groups and then academic support. And a lot of moms, if they can afford it, they'll do all of it because who doesn't want their child to um, be healthy but also to be able to really be supported at school. And I just wanted to add in a, just a quick um, personal story. Um, my kids used to be sick all the time. They were introduced to the products when they were four, three, and one. We had lots of colds, lots of um, flu. I just thought that was normal. I, and it is kind of, um, that's one of our pieces in educating is telling people it doesn't have to be that way. But we don't know it because that's just what we've experienced. Um, but anyway, started my kids on that immune health package, what you see right there at the top for younger kids. And um, Caleb, our oldest, when he was in fifth grade, got an award that he'd only missed two days of school, kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh -huh. And I just uh -huh. thought, wow, we, That's you know, and there were times like yeah. only nine kids were in class because of, you know, whatever had gone through there. And. <laughs> And the, I mean, these products really work. That was not um, what they were born with because they were sick all the time prior to Shackley. So just a great thing to think about with that. And then, um, oh, and then Lisa, you're the next slide. So yeah. That's okay. Okay. And so then we want to go ahead and help you just kind of calculate uh, what it looks like, four events, five people attending, about 20 families. This is going to be how in your mind you kind of imagine and visualize creating your 1,000 PV. So 20 families times 50 PV collections is 1,000, 10 times 100. I want to just throw in here because I think it's a good, a good thing to remember. These things happen with lots of follow-up and information and conversation. So, I mean, I suppose it is kind of like magical where someone could attend, but we just want you to know that this is the process process where you have events or meetings and you invite people to hear about Shackley and you can estimate about a thousand PV coming from that type of activity. So you can kind of see some of the promotions we still have going. The 100 PV order gives free membership. Uh, the essential plants gives free membership and free shipping. It is a really a, a nice time to talk about these things because the savings are really good. Really mm -hmm. good. 
Mm-hmm. Good deal. So we are going to talk about, um, again, the two aspects of our business, and we've, we've um, talked about this the last couple of weeks, um, developing our customer base and assembling our team of business leaders. And you know, when, two weeks ago, we talked about those strategies for developing the customer base, generating PV, and how to invite people. How do we introduce people to what we have? Um, and so this, this week, we're going to take it a little bit further um, in the process of identifying who we want to be on our team. And I love Stephanie's example. My goodness, who wouldn't want to be on Stephanie's team? <laughs> I love all that. So it's just really, um, it's just awesome. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And then last week we talked about why in-home businesses are so important and really the, the wonderful things it can do in, in different age groups and the things that it our business so beautifully offers to people in the different stages of their lives and where they're at. Um, we shared word tracks, we shared steps and processes of how to introduce people to the idea of the business. So now we really do want to move from the idea of the business to, okay, uh, yes someone wants to do a business and when they say yes then what's next and how to move them into a role of I believe kind of ownership and um, you know taking responsibility and moving into that committed zone so they can actually really grow and it's important so Mm -hmm. we know that just because we've had a conversation with someone and they've expressed interest or even that they've signed up to be a gold ambassador and and there's something going on it doesn't really mean that they're all in it's all gonna go you know one two three perfect we have to really be involved in that process so we want to talk about the role of the leader to help people move into the place of committedness so that they can really start being successful and there's a, there's a lot around being committed I think Joe said it a, a few months ago she said um, it's better to be uh, partially or oh gosh it was such a great quote uh, it, <laughs> what did you say Joe? Uh, it's important. No, full, being full time uh, partially committed is not being good as being part time fully committed. It was something around that. Mm. She's way better. But it really is true. So being committed yeah. is important, and we want to help people to move in that. But there's all, some things that have to happen before they can move mm-hmm. into the place. Things that have to happen internally. And so that's really what we want to explore. How? What is our role in that, and how can we help them move into committedness? Mm-hmm. And being a liter- leader is not a passive position and so mm-hmm. um, understanding what our role is is the first step to being able to actually step into it I think and Lisa if I could just tag on to that I feel sure. like um, one of the things that I've had to think through reevaluate is I would get that concept of well this is their business so I'm their leader I'm thinking of my downline and I think well this is their business so I guess they can you know they can break out as director when they want. They can do, and they and they can. But we actually can help guide them if we know what they want, because we know once they determine what they want, then we can help kind of um, move them along that path. Well, this is what, if this is what you want, this is what the plan looks like. And I just think I I have had hands off too much in the past that I thought, well, it's it's really just it's their thing and it is their business. But there are some things we can do and I just think it's a really good thing for us to talk about today well and they need us to do it so that is really mm-hmm. a good point. they need us to do it because we have the experience and they don't Very right good. right and so many people have not are coming to us having um, either worked outside the home in a different kind of business or maybe they've been a homemaker or you know they don't come already programmed with um, how to set goals how to coach people and so that's why these trainings like this are so important um, so when we're looking at going from interested to committed um, we have to remember we're not entirely responsible for the motivation and commitment level and I feel like this is like a little bit of a balancing act um, mm-hmm. for us that's in right. our minds as leaders um, we want to do what we can do to support them and guide them um, but we can't like this quote says we can't be entirely responsible for Um, what someone else does so um, but there are some things that we can do to guide them and that's what we're going to talk about today and so let's look at how we as leaders can guide people along this and the very first thing is that they're going to have an evaluation period and I love um, Lisa you just said this the other night that you had several people by um, golds and you thought okay their first thing is that they need to evaluate and continue to learn about what we have and we have tools for that we have lots of information that they can evaluate and so picking the best things we try not again this is um, 
I used to just literally throw information at, <laughs> at people, um, thinking if they have more information, I'm sure they'll, they'll go for it. Um, and so don't do that. Um, find what is the, really the, the things that you find are the most, um, the best way to express the message. So pick which videos from the Shackley TV that you feel like would really speak to them and maybe really meant a lot to you. Or pick a few topics from the Better Health in 31 Days or Better Future Starts Today. Um, this next one is so key, and sometimes I forget about it, and I'm not sure why I forget about it, because it's so important for them to hear other stories, and I think that's what's so powerful about what Stephanie shared about the Bunko parties, is that they are getting to hear from all these different people why they want to do their business, and that is really powerful. Um, so any time that you can bring other people uh, your uplines, your sidelines, your downlines to hear other people's stories, it just really helps then hear a variety of, wow, a lot of people want to do this for a lot of different reasons. Um, attending area conferences, sharing stories, um, and then connecting them to your team. Was somebody going to say something? Yeah, I was. Well, <laughs> I don't. Well, I just this There's a is lot a lot in the slide. That's yeah, why this mm -hmm. is critically important because I think sometimes we kind of lay back in the weeds or we we kind of stand off thinking, well, like you just said, Becky, it's their business. You know, I've told them, mm -hmm. you know, they they kind of know what to do. They just need to get going because we are afraid of scaring them off or we're mm -hmm. afraid that they might say well I'm not sure if I'm ready yet or I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I really want to do this and then 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 we're like then I don't have them the evaluation mm -hmm. period can be such a nice soft maybe gentle way of really easing people into greater commitment so mm -hmm. this is this is a really valuable you know, exercise this, to be sure we're this doing. This part up here, if you think about when you first talk to somebody about <clears throat> the business and you have your business conversation and uh, and then they decide that they're going to join you and they, they buy the distributor kit or the gold kit, whatever it is. You see, from that moment on, all they know is you. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so this process of evaluation is making sure that all their initial exposure and experience with Shackley is a very positive one. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are going to be skills they need to learn. And if we don't uh, take charge to make sure that they have access to the skills that they need to learn, it's like throwing them to the wolves, you know, because they'll go out and they'll say the wrong things, they'll fire hose, they'll who knows mm -hmm. what they'll do, they'll bury people in materials, I don't know, and because they don't have any skills yet, and so it's not fair to them. And by the way, there we we dedicated our entire six week summer school this past year, this past summer. Uh, to this understanding and, and really looking at the role of the leader. There's six great sessions in there. And um, and we've really fleshed this out be, because um, that's another reason sometimes we hold back from inviting people to come and be a part of our team and, and start a Shackley business is we're not sure we know how to guide them. And so we've got that all laid out and all these things that Becky just ticked through, we've got materials today and resources today we've never had before. So mm -hmm. this, they're in our hands, in, in a, especially in the beginning, in, in, a very, um, in a very sincere way. Okay, Becky, then let's look mm -hmm. at what that uh, continuum looks like. Right. So we've got, you know, it's kind of like a scale of 1 to 10 with interest of being on one end and committing being on the other. So how do we get people to move up the scale? And part of it is determining how interested are they in developing a business. And, um, you know, are you calling them? Are they calling you? Is that an equal exchange? Um, I think about um, Margaret used to always talk about uh, it's a tennis volley. You know, have you hit the ball over and they hit it back? Um, or are you hitting five balls and you never, they never hit it back? You know, that's important information for you to know. They're kind of telling you something when they're not returning your calls. You know, they may not be as interested. Um, and that's okay, uh, but we want to be able to know that we're doing our part um, with that too. So then, um, you know, are they attending training sessions? Are they listening into conference calls and events? Where are they spending their time? 
Um, are they continuing to learn? And I feel like the biggest thing is just to um, communicate. We are lifelong learners. And when you were just saying that, Barb, about um, on the last slide, I just feel like there are so many things that I just need to um, – I finally figured out podcasts. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but to have these these training sessions on the podcast and just listen to them over and over again, especially the ones that are my hiccups, that it's like, you know what, this always seems like this particular area is my bump. Well, you know what, we can listen to those things again and again, and we can we can put that in our brain. And um, so we want that for them too. We want them to listen to things and 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 learn about. Um, how to talk about the products and how to invite people into the business and all of that. Are they making contacts? Are they doing things? Are you noticing, um, you know, that you keep getting member notifications in your email? Um, are they blocking off time uh, to make it a priority that it's not just when it, I mean, we talk about that our business can fit into the nooks and crannies, but are they making sure that they have some nooks and crannies that day for for their business? How committed are they? Um, and the most of all, that they have expressed the reason why they want to do this, because that is what's going to propel them the farthest when it's personal. And um, again, um, Margaret used to share with us that she loved Barb's vision. And Barb, you had talked about Lake Erie dying and you were determined to share about the Shackley cleaners and how you could help and all of that. And she loved that so much, but it wasn't deep enough for Margaret because it was Barb's vision. And so it is, it's just, um, it does need to be personal. It does need to hit them um, where they're at. And then um, that quote, um, when you're interested you do what is convenient. But when you're committed, you do whatever it takes. Yeah. And that's a really nice synopsis right there. Mm -hmm. you know, and and I wanna, oh, I'm sorry, Barb. Ahead, I just want to point ahead. out that all of these areas that Becky kind of has beautifully taken through, these are all areas that people need our guidance in. So in mm -hmm. addition to utilizing this as information, which you, you stated so beautifully, as, as understanding where they're at, so that I always tell people, I want to work appropriate with, appropriately with you. I need to know, we need to be on the same page so I know how to do my part the best that mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. But there are also areas that we can give them guidance in and tell them, you know what, it is, if you really want to do this, you should be calling me all the time. I want you to know mm -hmm. that you're, you're supposed to reach out to me. I'm here for you, and, and training is essential, and and you know it's important that you have your time blocked out. And so this is a great list, actually, for mm -hmm. any of us to build from, because these are areas that that we're supposed to be connecting with them and help them. They need to understand their reason why. We need to talk about that. We need to flesh that out. We need to help them see their potential. So I actually am really impressed with these categories alone because they're really important areas to mm -hmm. work with people. You know, so. Very good. <clears throat> so uh, we thought it would be helpful to hear from people who are growing their businesses today and to ask them what it was for them that helped them move from interested to committed. And so I called Angie Thomas uh, because um, her story is really compelling, and I, I thought it would be helpful for us to hear what was it that shifted for her. And I was so impressed when she told me I wrote it all down, and then I said, good, you need to be on, the, on Thursday mornings. This is why people get caller ID when I call them. They're afraid. <laughs> anyway, good morning, Angie. Hello. Yeah, you totally tricked me into this. So, <laughs> uh, but Angie, what I forgot to ask you is I, I couldn't remember – how many years was it that you took to become even an associate? You know, a bazillion. I don't know. It was it, it, <laughs> it was it was a slower journey for me, so I don't remember either. And then, I don't. and then once you became an associate, how long were you an associate? <laughs> um, a couple years. I think. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted them to get a picture is that you loved Shackley and Shackley products all during that period. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a picture of Joey when he was tiny and he's now what, six? He's six and that picture is from before I had even started my business. Aww. And that was my, that was my very first Mother's Day. That's cool that you chose that Aww. picture. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so I wanted people to see, this is why we asked you to share your journey, because then in the past year, tell them what happened. Um, well, in the past year, I feel like my commitment 
like with this entire business, this has been a journey for me. So my commitment has also been a journey. And it has really solidified to, for me in this past year from going from, you know, doing this in my head. It was like, oh, this is my part-time thing. This is, um, you know, I'm a mom for, and I am still a mom first and all of these things first. So this was, but I acted as though this business was like three, four, five things down the list of things I do. Mm-hmm. And um, and now this is what I do. So it, this past year really changed my thinking and my commitment and and my actions around that. Mm. And in the last year, you went from associate to oh, director. Oh, that's asking. Sorry. To senior director. <laughs> well, I just want them to understand. We, and you're Great. almost that coordinator. And so let's then talk about, so it, and, and it, I realize this takes a little thinking about, what the heck did change? What happened that caused you in one year to advance three ranks when you had been at a so was a life you were a lifetime associate? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, that's okay. So, right? so, 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 mm-hmm. so let's let's walk through what what were some of the things then that you realized happened for you so we can understand how we can help those that we are coaching to move along that continuum as well. So I'm not sure if it's part of my personality trait. You know, when you talked about the four personality traits, I think I fall mostly into the amiable um, Mm -hmm. category. But I'm so not sure if this is just for everybody or or just me. But I'm someone that really needs positive feedback, Mm -hmm. and I I thrive on it and I do better with it. So I realize that um, and that that is by the way for everyone. Okay. Good, because mm-hmm. I like it, <laughs> um, and I don't like being an amiable. I would, I, I'm a resistant amiable. I'm in the closet on that. Um, so, so uh, I'm a an amiable. <laughs> um, Just remember, everybody's a combination. Everybody's a combination. <laughs> there you go. That's right. See. Um, Okay, so there's four areas that I really realize that I'm getting great feedback from, and it's teaching me that those are some four areas that I can also give good feedback in. Mm. So, um, and because of that feedback that I'm getting, it helps me stay committed and realize what I'm doing is awesome and important. Mm -hmm. Um, So from my uplines, from my leaders, of course, Barb is the most positive person on the planet. So Mm -hmm. every time I talk to her, I feel like I could probably run to the moon and back. Um, and then I'm lucky that my mom is my direct upline. So what mm. other better person to have positive feedback from than your mother, right? Exactly. So I'm, I, I get great positive feedback from uplines. Um, from my customers, when I hear that they love the products, when they're feeling better, when they're saving money on cleaning products, or they're actually able to breathe when they do laundry, like that just makes me so excited. I know all these things, but I love when it's reinforced from from customers Um, because usually those customers are my friends so even better when I'm Mm -hmm. making them you know happy Um, for my peers in Shackley so all the friendships that I've made um, I said it before you know Barb told me that these are friends a couple years ago after the first conference I went to she said these are friends you're going to make and they're going to be your friends forever. I'm like, whatever. Mm -hmm. I have got friends. I don't need friends. I just need a business, (laughs) you know. And But then, like, I I was like, okay, but Barb is always right. So I worked at it. Make a note of that, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) They said that to my children. (laughs) You know, but but seriously, I have made friends that I hope that I know forever and ever. And Mm -hmm. um, so so that has been really wonderful. And, And in kind of a funny way, like, I don't, want to not have this business because then I'll lose some of those relationships. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to, you know, this is really fun for me to be able to see everybody at conferences and meetings and talk to them on the phone. And I want to be part of that. I want to be part of what they're part of. Mm-hmm. And also, um, you know, getting ideas from them and then, and then things like this, like this is to me really exciting to be able to share with everyone. So this is mm-hmm. for me, it's positive feedback. Um, And then from my downlines, so from people on my team, hearing that they are really glad that they've made this decision, hearing that they are having fun in this business, and hearing that um, they are changing lives through this business, that um, and that I'm part of that helps me stay committed so that I can continue to to lead them and do, um, you know, what I can do to help them grow their business and reach their goals adds another level of commitment. Until I had um, a team. It didn't, 
you know, I, I could have left this and, you know, you know, one of my teammates is Laura and she's very self-led. So, you know, I, it, it, but then when I started growing my team, it felt really like, okay, well, let's do this. I got to stick in it for them. Mm. And I got this, I hope Jenny doesn't mind me sharing this, but I got this message from my um, teammate, Jenny, and she said to me, one of the best decisions I have ever made was joining Shackley, both as a member and distributor. It makes me want to cry reading that again. Yes. Um, so, you know, I just like, the, the, you know, it just it's just wonderful getting messages like that. So. So positive feedback, super important. Um, mm -hmm. Joining these coaching circles, I've been in a couple now, and they have kept me on point. So when I know mm -hmm. that every week we're going to have a conversation with peers um, about what I've been doing this past week, I want to make sure I have something to say that I've been doing, right? <laughs> so <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Right, so I so that keeps me active. It keeps me um, in the game, and then learning from them and learning these great ideas. And I am not a competitive person by nature; like I was never into team sports or anything. But there is a little part of me that's like, well, I got to keep up with them. Or mm -hmm. gosh, if, if they're all going to be at the chairman's retreat, I better be there too, you know. And mm -hmm. like, there's part of me that doesn't like to be left out of of all of that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that was that, that by the way was a huge motivation for me. That's uh, really the major reason I became a master because all really? my friends, yeah, because they, you know, that's when um, the the masters decided that the most important thing that they could do to advance the company back in 1998 was to develop. Um, help a whole lot of people advance to master and there were a whole bunch of us who were at the key uh, coordinator level uh, Joe you were among them and um, we were quite happy as key coordinators we all were friends we got to go do things together as key coordinators we were making good money and then one by one they got picked off into this <laughs> dream team that Roland had created and um, and it was that same thing. It's like, oh, you're, they're all going to be there. And I, I mean, you know, th those friendships are so powerful. When mm -hmm. you were just talking about the friends you've made in Shackley, I was thinking, oh, I have lots of friends, wonderful people, but my closest friends are my Shackley friends. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because we, we share um, values and a sense of purpose that is much much greater than just social stuff you know and I um, when you said that I thought it's one of the most important things we can do as leaders is get connected ourselves and make sure our new distributors and our business partners are connected so they make friendships it and I'm fine they can make friendships within our team or outside of our team right. it doesn't matter it's just right. Friendships are the most important things in humans' lives. That's what that whole, that was one of the blue zone um, awarenesses, is that mm -hmm. the people who live to be a hundred and whatever, you know, they, they had a sense of purpose to their life. They knew that they were loved and they were in communities that were loving and supportive. So you are hitting some really important points here, Angie. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to affirmations. I'll tell them about that one. Well, so this, you know, like everything else I do, it's never my idea. This one I totally stole from Becky Choate because <laughs> with back to my peers and colleagues and friendships I've made, um, it's also given me people to reach out to when I have questions, um, where I'm, when I'm stuck or when I need some advice. So mm -hmm. I reached out to Becky a few months ago, and um, and she told me about this thing she does with her affirmations. So I copied it, and it's been great. <laughs> I feel I feel like talking about Yay! it is wrong. I should let Becky talk about it, but no. Um, so Becky was kind enough to share with me her affirmations, and they're a full, typed up eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper of affirmations that she says to herself. She reads morning and night, and they're not just Shackley. They're um, you know to do with family. Her, her spiritual mm -hmm. and religious life and Shackley. And so I, I took that also and I created mine, a lot of them, especially the, the Bible verses I mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. copied because she's better yeah. at that than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so I do. I've been reading them 
um, especially since I go from conference morning and night, they're my bookmark so that I make sure that I'm seeing them every day. Mm. Um, and it's been, I really believe that starting and ending the day with these things that I want for my life has, has really helped me. Mm. Can you read a That's couple awesome. of the ones that were meaningful for you, Angie, that you sent me? Do you have them in front of you? Um, uh, and by the way, next week we're going to be doing a whole session on um, goal setting and affirmations uh, because they're they're really very powerful and um, and and so I'm going to include I'll, we'll give them all to you in the written form but did you find them Ange the ones that you sent yeah me? yeah I've got Go them um, so I, one of them is I love being a coordinator note I am not a coordinator so this is mm -hmm. what I want for myself okay mm -hmm. I love being a coordinator I have two strong directors whom I help build vibrant growing businesses that change lives. I have an organizational volume of 5,000 5, PV a month. I don't have that organizational volume yet, and I'm not a coordinator, but if I say that to myself enough, it's yes. going to happen. Exactly. Um, that's all they work. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I remember Margaret, as you're saying that, Mar Margaret, when we first learned this, you know, and that was our assignment, we had to write these, these um, affirmations, and Margaret would write, I am a, a dynamic director with... 3,000 PV, and then she'd go, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm not a 3,000 PV. Oh, I'll write it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, every time she did, she did exactly what Angie was just doing. Now, I'm not a All right, I'm going to write it. And then, and then she, she tells a story about how she's writing it one day. I am a 3,000 PV uh, director. And then she goes, hmm. She crosses out 3,000, and she writes 4,000. Oh, that's right. Aww. I am a fourth, and that's, and then it was five thousand, and then it was six thousand. It was the, it, it's as our confidence builds, and as our belief in ourselves builds, then our goals expand, and our visions expand, and the affirmations expand. So mm -hmm. it's a great, I love your example. That's terrific. Okay, <laughs> anything else there? All right, now also talk about these books you've been reading since uh, Cleveland. Okay, so one thing I've always wanted to be able to do more of is read books that would help me in my business. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, probably like everybody else on this call, by the time we shut down the computer and stop you know, doing our day thing, getting the laundry done. We're tired and we get in bed and we can read two pages before we fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And Or the other thing that happens to me when I try to read before bed, is, and this is just me, I've talked to other people that bedtime is the best time to read. But for me, it'll start me thinking, like, oh, I should be doing this. Oh, you know, that reminds me of so-and-so, I should talk to them. And my head then can't <laughs> shut off to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So... And my kids wake up at an ungodly early hour. So, <laughs> you know, in my head, I was like, well, then I'll never read until they go to college. But I decided <laughs> that <laughs> um, <laughs> I decided that um, I was going to wake up at 5.15 in the morning because Eliza wakes up at 6.15 usually. And, um, and I was going to drink my coffee by myself. I was going to mm. have my meal bar by myself without little children asking for any of it. And I was going to read a book. So mm -hmm. I am, I, and, and the books have to do with my business. So some of them are like sales, networking, market, you know, those, the GoPro type of books. And some of them are on health and nutrition so that I can also be learning in that way. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm on book five now. And that's since conference. Wow. And, um, I even did this on vacation. When we went on vacation, I woke up and this time now is special precious time I don't like missing it and mm. um, and even when I do go to bed too late that 515 comes too early I still want this time because it's like this beautiful precious quiet mm. dark nobody's awake time so and it is like totally just especially the health books that I read make me realize that what we do is so important mm. and there is and I just want to do more of it, and I want to learn more of it, and I want to share more of it because because the things that are going on in health and the things that we can help people with is, mm -hmm. are incredible. Mm -hmm. So um, so that has really continued to to ground my commitment. Mm -hmm. and, 
um, is this reading and the professional development that comes with that too because the more you work on professional development I think in any industry I think the more you feel committed to your profession mm -hmm. gosh that's just such a good synopsis Angie so so good <laughs> you spoke with a couple of your folks and um, mm -hmm. they lifted up similar things anything you want to add from them yeah, Francine and Cassie both are, um, they were both Berkeley's directors last spring, and so I was asking them, you know, what, what do you feel like was that point from going from interested to committed? And I, um, they had really good things. Francine was talking about how um, actually my vision helped her personalize her own vision, and um, she felt like it's that whole principle, just like when we're parenting, that things are caught, not taught. And so that because I was really clear about what I wanted to do, that helped her be really clear about what she wanted to do in her own life. Um, and then action, following her vision. And then with Cassie, one of the biggest things that she talked about was the camaraderie that she feels like she has felt when we, I don't know when that was that we launched the Lagoni Facebook page, but our team page, she said, has made such a big difference. And um, just that she's so inspired by other people. Um, and uh, she talked about that it was it was inspirational to her that so many um, women or people have been doing businesses for so long, and yet there were also women in her same life stage that were having incredible growth as well. So all of that was just really, really inspirational to her. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. All right. Okay, Lise. Okay, so now let's talk about you and your role and helping your people become more committed. And one of the first things we want to help you realize is that there's this thing called fear. And it happens to mm -hmm. all of us and it really happens to a new person. And so it's really important as a leader that you are there. Here's, here's the way I think that I see it. When someone says, oh gosh, I think I might do this. What if I can't do it? I'm going to do it. I could do this. Oh my gosh, what are people going to think? <laughs> you really have, I think with most people, hundreds of conversational questions and things going on internally within their mind and many of them are attached to fear. This is so new. This is so different. It's exciting and it's terrifying. So one of our roles is, is to help them um, answer some of those questions and help, help them quiet some of those questions. And mm -hmm. we can do that by having some internal discussions with them. So as a leader, we need to be confident enough to say, okay, tell me what you're thinking. Tell me how you're feeling. And give them space to recognize that they're really probably having an army of conflict and conversation internally. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because one of the things I'll talk with our leaders and we will get to a place where we finally can identify that there is a fear. And then the question is, well, how, what do we do with that fear? There's mm -hmm. amazing so many times just by recognizing it, discussing it, and getting it out, that in and of itself can help them deal with the fear. But we just want to be aware that fear is a really big thing that can stop people. And as a leader, you have a great amount of potential to help them move through that if you're staying close and you're having conversations and you're offering some guidance within that internal piece. And then, of mm -hmm. course, you're ready to offer some things that will help them grow and move towards their goals and help give them, equip them. You know, this is a great place, of course, for everyone every new person, but because they're going to hear things and those things will come in and answer some of those questions and deal with some of that internal stuff. I reference this session all the time with Margaret Trost. It was one of the mm -hmm. best. In fact, I've, I've taught two classes off of that material because it was mm -hmm. so good. And it's just a very real part of the human existence, the, the emotional mental piece. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it does have the power to propel a person or to stop a person. So we, we as leaders have to acknowledge that that is a real part of what's going on. Um, and then it's been discussed already, but the importance of being connected. Angie, that was probably the most beautiful explanation I've ever heard mm -hmm. of what, offer, what is offered through the relationship piece. And I, um, I totally second that. It is, it is so big. So we want to tie our people in, let them have relationships, encourage relationships, foster relationships within your team because that helps them um, 
be healthy. I think one of the biggest threats to a Shackley business is isolation. And so we as leaders need to recognize this and make sure that our, our people are never being isolated. We want to draw them in. And then of course the compelling reasons that they want to start their business, and we're going to go into this a couple, a little bit more in the next few slides, but just helping them identify and recognize what is the heart of what's going to drive their business. And those conversations have to happen, otherwise they're not going to be able to tap into that. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, truly, I think one of the most important things we can do for a new person is uh, paint the pictures. They absolutely need us to help them see the possibilities. They have to see the possibilities of a Shackley business, but they have to see the possibilities of them in a Shackley business. So you have to be able to help them recognize some of their gifts and some of their needs and some of their dreams, and all of that comes together. They don't have it. They need you to step in and pull that out and help mm -hmm. them see the possibilities for themselves and what they can do in this. And Angie hit it on the head. You know, if if I hadn't had people in my my career speak into me and say, "Gosh, you can do this. You can do this well," I wouldn't have had the guts to believe that I can do this and I can mm -hmm. do this well. I needed someone to start that internally for me. So. Excellent. So you can see some more roles here. Um, of course, identifying their why. There's com this is a conversation that you must have. I think we can tend to gloss over it a little bit. You you can't. You want to spend time and get here. Schedule time for this. Uh, our job is to help them find their reasons and to help mm -hmm. their reasons to be clear and strong because they absolutely are going to need those to build from. And you're going to use those to help structure their plan and help structure their goal, their goals, and their strategy, all of that's going to come in from this very first important step of finding their reasons, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to help them. We're going to talk about stories. Okay, so here's already a story I've, I've tucked away in my head from today. You know, Becky talking about her kiddo only missing two classes, it's, you know, or two days in like, what, five or six years? I'll repeat that a hundred times because that is powerful. <laughs> exactly. We have, uh, really, uh, what mom's not going to want to be Becky? Oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. amazing. But we as a business leader can pull these stories and help them identify to them. So when I'm working with someone, and this is typically the go-to thing that like if someone just becomes a gold ambassador, I say, okay, we're going to set up a time and we're going to talk about your business. And I know you have 100 questions and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. And we're going to explore what this looks like for you and we're going to make it fit for you. Because one of the main questions they have is, oh my gosh, am I crazy? This is so overwhelming. I don't have time. So I get to start to settle that right there. We're going to make this right for you. You're going to figure out how this fits in your life. But then this is their assignment. So I'm going to give you some questions that I want you to start thinking about. And I want you to ponder these and I want you to spend just a little time before we get together. Because this is a really important thing. And I'll ask them, I want, and then, and then I have to give a little disclaimer because there's a certain amount of them will panic and go, oh my gosh, I won't be able to do this assignment. And I'm like, no, no, no. Just get it started. Just start thinking this. What is it about Shackley and the business that is attracting you? What is happening here that made you make that decision to become a, a gold ambassador? I have to know that. They have to know that. What are your what do your biggest dreams and goals look like? And this is in their life, right? I want to know who they are. What makes them tick? How are they driven? Uh, and how can Shackley fit into that? Some people will have this crystal clear. Some people will have no idea. But it has to have a, it, this conversation is so valuable. And then, what would you like your business to offer you, long term? Mm -hmm. I want to help them see five, ten years from now. I want them to see Shackley in their life. This is not. This is not a little phase that we're going to play with this spring because they're bored, right? This is something I want them to see 10 years from now. So long term and then from a year from now. And the reason I like this conversation because this is my launching pad for helping them set goals. And if I can get them to have this conversation about what they want now, what do they want in a few months, and then pulling in what is your life's purpose, what's going to happen is now I'm going to be able to help them plan but it's not my plan, it's their plan. And one of the mm -hmm. most important things I think as a leader helping people move into commitment is somewhere in this process ownership has to happen. And so if a lot of times people see you as successful and see you as the builder, they're not going to take ownership of their business until somehow it becomes theirs. And so this, I, I, I'm telling you, I've learned all of this 
the hard way because I did it all wrong for too many years and I would tell people exactly <laughs> what to do and then it was my plan and they never were emotionally connected to the plan sure. because it was my plan and I had created it and I told them what to do and how soon they could do it. <laughs> so I, I learned this and that's like 14 years later, thank goodness I can learn. But the point is, is that we want you to see how valuable you are to your new leader. And even though mm -hmm. some of you might be uncomfortable at the beginning, you are so important. And they need you to help them develop this. And all of this goes into, again, the ownership and the, the passion and the belief moves them into a place of being committed because it becomes their plan, their dream, and their business. But you are the catalyst, right? You light the fire. So, mm -hmm. and, and, I might, and I might mention that last uh, bullet point about life's purpose. That's something you might not want to hit them with in the first meeting, or they'll think they're in therapy. But <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. Good. Well, and I just want to tag on to that, looking at those questions from a different perspective. When you were saying all that, Lisa, I thought one thing that you're doing is, as a leader is calming. You're mm. calming. You're allowing them to slow down. We're gonna, this is going to be about you. You're calming. And if you feel like as a leader, like that's not natural for you, that's a great thing to work on. Just like how can I, how can I be more of a calming presence? And believe me, having yeah. just had three teenagers leave the home, it's good if you can be calm. And then right. <laughs> in our marriages, it's good to be calm. So if you feel like that is not a strength for you as a leader, that you are calming to your downline, you can learn that. You can learn how to do that. But that's what I noticed that whole time. You were calming, calming, calming. Yeah. It's so I, good. I, I, I'm well, safe. I'm, I'm safe. She's good. It's going to be okay. Right. <laughs> so <Some laughs> We all need to hear it. This. I don't have to have all the answers. I can handle it. But And I do want to say, and then uh, I'm excited for Becky to have you move into this conversation here. Um, one of the things that's important to realize is that all those lists of questions, those are not just for a brand new person. This is a mm -hmm. conversation you can have with anyone at any time in their organization that's mm -hmm. going to help them get some clarity and some depth and, and, and committedness. So, okay. That's awesome. Um, I'll do this uh, quickly. But uh, you may have heard me say this before. Rick Seymour has a thing in his presentation of Great Expectations where he talks about um, just picture yourself in bed. You're kind of cold. And you're wrestling with yourself. Are you cold enough to get up out of bed? <laughs> and I mean, I just think it's such a great illustration because that we have that we have that wrestling in our mind. Well, I really don't want to get out of bed. So I think, okay, I'll just be cold a little bit longer. Well, there's, a blanket, there's a blanket in the closet across the room. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you just have to get up. So my uh, part of my story is that um, for several years it was not cold enough. <laughs> I guess because I didn't do anything different. I did not. I did not move. I didn't. Um, uh, I was okay being cold. And so um, just. Like, ask yourself that. How cold does it have to get before I change, before I do something different? Um, was there anything else on that, Barb, you want me to? No, but that, it, it's just such a great image. Is mm -hmm. that this is why what Lisa was just sharing about helping people identify their reasons. How many mm -hmm. times has anyone even asked them about the what do you want question? It's a tough question. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't mm -hmm. answer way and and um, and or even ask people gently gently by the way about have you ever thought about what your life's purpose is what do you want to be about I I contend that people love the idea of being able to cre contribute to the greater good of others mm -hmm. and um, and, I, and I think having those conversations with us can be very appealing. Just remember your personality styles, because an analytical might f find that a little weird. So just you know, <laughs> tread, tread gently and mm -hmm. be more methodical. But it's that's why it's so important. Okay, action steps. Lisa. An analytical might say, "Hey, get out of my head, you crazy woman." <laughs> <laughs> I want to piggyback on what Becky said because what I think is as their dreams grow and they get more clear and they get more focused and they get more um, confident, they get colder. And what I mean by that is it becomes more motivating mm -hmm. to get out of bed and get the blanket. Mm -hmm. So I think that's totally true. part of that. You know, I got I got so compelled I got every blanket in the house out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, my dream was so, so intense and I think that that's kind of part of that whole conversation. So. 
All right, so um, here's our action steps. We want you to keep uh, working on your goals for September. Remember our mantra, the month is never over until the calendar changes, so do not quit working on your month. Don't bail out mm -hmm. early. Do not psych yourself out and tell you it's almost over. We have a full week. There's a lot that can happen, so uh, work, work, work until the last minute. You can do great things in the next um, few days. And then if you have a leader that needs to have this conversation, if you need to have this conversation and go through some of those questions and get uh, more in touch with what on earth is driving you and what's happening, um, do that. And we'd like to encourage you, if you feel like you have not done that with your people, it's okay. It's not too late. You can go back and have that conversation again. Say, I've been thinking of you. I was wondering if you'd like to meet and just talk about you for a while, where you're at. Um, and then there's some great archived things, additional ideas for assembling the business team. I saw in the questions that they're looking for uh, Margaret. It was the last session of our summer, wasn't it, that Margaret came on? Uh, I think it yep. was so I think it was, so, yeah. You'll find it there at Better Future. Uh, Fantastic. Um, and then we uh, we have some more there, and then uh, we have there's well they're all listed. There's a ton of them, and then mm -hmm. I'm just reading through all of these great little archives here. So so we just want you to tap into what's out there, um, stay focused, uh, and 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 make sure you're taking good care of your people and helping them get going as best they can. So mm -hmm. anything else anybody wants to add? Well, very good. We have a number of questions. Joe, you want to field some of these? Yeah, there is one question here, and I had the same thing. I was wondering about with the the uh, smoothie workshops. You're putting things in the freezer, but you're not. But there's no liquid there. So are they just putting powder and fruit and vegetables, veggies, right. spinach, right. or something in the bag yeah. that they freeze? Right. Mm -hmm. Then all they add now is the ice and the and the almond milk, the dairy milk, the, okay. uh, the water, whatever it is. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that idea, I understand, comes from Sarah Solomon. Thank you, everyone, for knowing that. Let's give Sarah some recognition for that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love Judy Carlson. That was exactly my question, Judy. What is bunco? <laughs> 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 we all exactly. evidently need to learn. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a <laughs> But uh, that, that involves changing tables, so you keep interacting with different people. That's why that's, that was so beneficial. I know, Rochelle, you asked the same question. I know, what the heck is Bunko? <laughs> you might have to live in the South to know. I don't know. <laughs> we okay. played in Colorado. It's fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, Upload yeah, the directions to Facebook Shackley sharing site. I don't know what, what that's saying. Oh, 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 I think someone wants to join. If the Shackley sharing is a Facebook group, so if that's what they're talking about, you can go, you go to your Facebook and type in the top, sharing Shackley, and then there's, uh, you have to submit to be added to the group, and the, the steps and directions are right there. So if mm -hmm. that's what they're talking about, but I think so. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay. And that says that um, a tip from Gary Berg, who's a great book reader, he must read a book. Every week, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, he says he highlights it as he's reading it, mm -hmm. and then he rereads the highlights and makes brief notes, and that's what he, you know, how he, he, he learns from it, and, and of course he uses it when he teaches. Uh, that's good, Annette. Thanks. Mm -hmm, great. Okay, um, Joe. Anything else? Uh, well. Yeah, and I it, it has to do. The, I saw it. I noticed it also on those pictures from the. Um, uh, the daycare facility, there was a, a, a thing about doTERRA and products there. Did they also do a presentation, people were wondering? Oh, let's unmute Stephanie. I don't know, but um, can anybody unmute Stephanie, see if, if, if we can reach her. The um, that It's interesting, I don't remember her doing it that night, but you know that is another way of networking. Uh, Susan Knott came up with that. I'll Last year, and she, okay, Stephanie? and she um, and and they they networked with other people who had home businesses, and you know who they ended up selling the most to. 
<laughs> was the other people who had home businesses. Really, it was true. It's a, it was a lovely idea. It's, it's networking, same as when you network in the BNI groups, uh, which stands for, by the way, Business Networking International. But um, next week, when uh, Crystal joins us, we'll have to see. It'll either be next week or the, or the following week. I got to check everybody's schedule. But um, she built her business on uh, networking and I think Betsy Learman did too, going to Chamber of Commerce and community um, business groups and uh, she created, this is Crystal Johnson, she created a six minute business presentation which was the first time she presented her business at this Chamber of Commerce and she got one gold member immediately from it. And um, and uh, I think two or three people came up to her immediately after her presentation and said they want to talk to you about the business. And she's been doing appointments with them since. So she's going to share what she exactly what she did, what she said, what the slides she used, and how she followed up. Mm -hmm. That's coming up. Okay. It did. It was Stephanie there. Did we get her? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. You know, Meredith might actually be a great person to ask this question to if you want to unmute her too, because um, she's also got something coming up that she's doing herself there. But um, I believe that the Dutera person is also another customer of uh, Busy Patch, and I'm pretty sure that the owner is also a distributor. And so that was her stuff that was sitting there. But no, we didn't go together on an event or anything like that, um, but they did allow Meredith to set up a display at the front desk um, because it's a hmm. private um, daycare with, you can bring kids in, but it's through appointment only, so that's how we were able to do that, but um, yeah, I were you guys able to unmute Meredith? She would have uh, no, I, I, I think she's at work her. now, so she okay. may not be able to. Okay, so she, um, no, but going off of what you guys said about joining with other um markets. She is going to be hosting an event at the same daycare um, with a bunch of other companies, um, Dutera, um, the Norwax, um, there's going to be some clothing line companies there, I'm not sure which one specifically, but um, so what Meredith's going to do, because it's kind of like a higher end um, clothing line um, uh, launch, I suppose. Uh, she's going to have a lot of Nature Bright samples in the cleaning line there to share. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be working with other people, and so I'm sure she's really great at building relationships. So she'll be sharing with the other um, company distributors what Shackley is. So. I think that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's network wherever yeah. we can. I think that's totally great. Good. We have Thanks. some clarification on the smoothie stuff from Moira. Said you add the powder to a snack bag, and then you add the additional ingredients to another yes. bag and label. Oh, it. to a separate bag. Okay. <laughs> Keep and then going. it goes in. That goes in the freezer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it could be blueberries, bananas, um, right. ginger, ginger root, uh, spinach leaves, anything like that. Yeah, Good. Those, that's what goes in the freezer, and then the, the I would think the powder bag is, you know, they just keep in the cupboard, and then throw it all together in a blender and whir it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, where do you find the um, podcast? Um, at betterfuturestartstoday.com. That is a uh, one of the two subscription sites. The subscription gives you access to both, and the other one is uh, BetterHealthIn31Days.com. And uh, Chris and Michelle Spell, who uh, are the webmasters for that, they they operate that. They uh, record what we do. Which, by the way, Chris said we shouldn't change presenters in the middle of the. Oh of yeah. The well, sorry. <laughs> oh, I'll get a new computer. Okay, and uh, anyway, that um, then they they uh, just uh, when you go to one of those sites, it'll tell you how you can uh, take out a subscription, which you can do yourself, and then you can um, have it's I don't know fourteen or fifteen dollars a month, something like that. But then you um, then it he, they set it up with your picture, your story that your customers can go to, or you can go in jointly um, with some other people and and do the same thing. But it uh, it's uh, it helps compensate them for their time for maintaining all of that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. Barb, there's still more questions about that smoothie bear. Maybe Moira or somebody could type up 
some detailed instructions, and then we could attach that next week even. Yeah, I think Moira said that they already have some files on it, so I bet you they probably Yeah, and Pam was going to do that. Mm -hmm. She just got in the middle of um, demolition of the house, and she um, so we'll get that, and we'll either attach it this week or next week as soon as we, we get that. Mm -hmm. But quite, it's fascinating. I, I'm <laughs> I'm just amazed how successful it is. So it, it exists somewhere, so we'll, we'll get it to you and we'll attach it. And people are requesting a list of the books. Angie mentioned reading some books and stuff, and I think maybe we might even, maybe we'll do a slide barb on that next week at the in the pre-call, a list of recommended mm -hmm. books to mm -hmm. read. I'm making a note right now. Okay. She mentioned Eric Worre, uh, GoPro. I also noticed... Um, Ashley McDonald uh, has a group reading Benet Brown books. Um, hmm. uh, and then the, uh, Sarah Robbins Robin. was a real popular one. Mm -hmm. And then Rock also uh, Flip Flop CEO is a good my one. my new favorite. Yeah, I love it. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So some are on personal development. Some are on business. Some are on the, you know, the industry. That would be Sarah Robbins and Eric Warre um, at W-O-R-R-E. And then there's all the leadership ones, um, John Maxwell. There's a bunch of those. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and and if you go uh, to the uh, summer session, what do we call that? Our business grows as we grow. Um, we had a lot of books that we listed on that one too. Mm -hmm. I remember um, we had um, the leadership engine, Joe, and that one about layered. Layered leadership. Layered and leadership. A lot of, I think that's yeah, there were a lot in there too, but we'll we'll compile a new list that's for you. That's, that's a good idea to do periodically. Yeah. I'm just starting a book that Susan not recommended called The Best Yes, and it's about um, kind of helping. Uh, it's helpful for anything in life, of course, but there's lots of things about our time too, and what is our best yes? What is the thing we should definitely say yes to and it's it's really it's really good it's very helpful very good okay golly okay so oh do you have trouble hearing me today you did uh, yeah. get, it, like it, when it, you first yeah. started to talk it was real quiet and then it would you get, would get soft at times they're wonderful this is the new microphone <laughs> okay thank you everybody gosh you good I thought there's, together. there's a quick question there that someone wants me to repeat what I say to current buildings to be in the conversation of the question. Uh, uh -huh. If it's someone who just came in, I'll say, hey, we need to we need to uh, sit down and talk and all that. If if someone's an existing builder and I want to get back in there, it's typically we've had a conversation about them wanting to kind of get reengaged and, and feeling stuck and want to get focused. So I'll say, okay. And and I actually do like them to still go through the questions before we meet. Um, so I'll say, let's just let's just start here. Um, I'm going to send you some questions. I want you to think about them. Kind of write some out. And I might change the wording a little bit, but that's what that will be. And then we'll get together. And here's another one for an existing builder. I'll say, and I want you to list the top three things that are going great in your business. And I want you to list the, the top three things that are going terrible in your business. So that's just a little Great something question. that I do. Yeah, it, yeah. Gets, it gets me in there. You know what I mean? Gets gets us figuring mm -hmm. out what's going on. So. And, and you know what? That, that reminds me, um, Joe, of Dan Henderson. Um, there's a about I guess it's probably two years. I bet it was fall of of thirteen, twenty thirteen. We did a really good session with him about coaching and about um, getting people started correctly or something like that. And he said the most important thing is you want to know, are they a red light or are they a green light? And what happens is we're afraid to ask because we're afraid they might be a red light. But he said it's better to know so you know where to, where to put your time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If somebody isn't there, you got to know they're a red light, that they're they're not at the committed level. And then there are things maybe that you can do to help move them along. Maybe there's not. Uh, and then, but if they're a green light, then you know you better be there ready to tell them the next step and to strategize with them and to get them connected to, you know, we have a number of sessions called Getting Started 101. You know, and then you'll know exactly what the steps are. And there's a good one now when they get their distributor kit. There's a checklist in there that tells them about what to do. That's important. You know, mm -hmm. so um, good, very good point. Thanks for that. Okay, anything else? Um, oh, Renee says they play bunko in Minnesota, Joe. 
to know. <laughs> <Not> everywhere. <laughs> it's not just in the south. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to play. Oh, my gosh. It's really cute. Okay. Thanks, everybody. So, yes, a number of you are asking about goals and about the affirmations. We're going to do a whole session on them. So we just have to uh, get get our speakers lined up. It will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm not quite sure of the order yet. And we'll definitely get Crystal's um, material to you, too. Okay. Anything else, Joe? No, it looks good. I think we're good. Okay. Um, Okay, I just saw it. Jerry said, uh, oh, and she said, don't forget Dr. Shackley's reflections on the philosophy. Good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, over and out, everybody. Right. See you next Thursday. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Have, Bye -bye. have a great Bye -bye. end of the month. Do something mm -hmm. amazing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.